Hey guys, well, welcome to another installment of the PH uh, Journals podcast. And um, yeah, we're out at the range today, just getting our final bit of preparation on our rifles before uh, the big hunt on the 17th of March. So um, yeah, guys, this is the first podcast of 2020. Um, it's well overdue. And uh, there is a reason for that. And you know, some of it's got to do with my YouTube journey that I've started, and some of it's got to do with a little bit of personal issues. But um, yeah, we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, for those of you that have tuned in on uh, YouTube, thank you so much for popping in. Uh, if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notifications, maybe drop a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I'd really appreciate it. It goes a long way. Um, if you've joined us on any one of our podcasting platforms, thank you so much. Guys, uh, really appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, guys, just a big thumbs up and just a big thank you to uh, Trees and Camo. Thank you for everything that they've done for me over the past probably about six or eight months. Um, I joined the pro staff team last year. And um, I must say, guys, I've, I've always... I've, I've, as a PH, I've been crying for a decent bit of camo in South Africa, and finally it's here. Trees in have definitely delivered some of the best quality camo that you can imagine. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just so stoked to be a part of the team. Used it a little bit towards the end of last year, but I'm going to hit the ground running now as we come up into my first hunt next week. Um, so, yeah, really looking forward to it. They come out in two seasons. You get the early season and the late season. On this particular hunt, I'll be using the early season uh, just because of the greener tinge and we've had plenty of rain, which is a huge relief as far as the drought was concerned. But yeah, so um, I'll be using the early season just because of the greener tinge, it blends in pretty well and um, yeah, just looking so forward to it. It's a lot lighter as well, the early season compared to the late season. The late season is more for your winter top um, conditions, but um, yeah, just so excited to be a part of the team and really going to... Um, put them to the test this year and I'm, I'm looking forward to it um next up we've got maxis tires uh, on my pickup at the moment we're using the maxis razors and the mining application it comes with the three plus sidewall phenomenal 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 tire i used a little bit in the mountains last year uh, because of the drought we didn't have much rain to play around with um, but fortunately we've had a bit of rain now so yeah i threw it around our old motocross track um about a week or two ago and i must say they have been absolutely fantastic you know the last thing is a ph when you're out in the fold you, your time's already limited so to limit it by even even more by having a small little problem like a puncher or a blowout can set you back a long way on a seven day safari so yeah big thumbs up to max's tires thank you so much uh, for everything that they've done for me um yeah guys and then um yeah just Without further ado, uh, let's get it. When a hunter has done what he considers to be his or her duty to the animals we find someone to protect, they will leave a legacy that will last a lifetime. Hey guys like i said we've popped out here to the to the range so if you do hear a few gunshots in the background a few cars driving around uh excuse it um but yeah my, my turn's not up yet so i thought well you know what better way to spend a bit of time and kick off my 2020 podcasting um journey and uh yeah i must say guys this past year has been well the past couple of months have been a uh massive roller coaster but um so basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to tell you guys a normal everyday safari um what you can expect on a normal average day out in the bush um and what you can expect from an outfitter's perspective and then i'll just get into a little bit of the personal side uh, towards the end just let you guys know where i stand as far as moving forward with this wonderful journey i've started um yeah it's, it's got a lot to do with passion and and um yeah I'm, I'm i'm very 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 happy with where i am at the moment so guys um yeah basically to start the season off um 
There's a lot of paperwork that gets, has to get done behind the scenes and uh, as far as the pH, you need to make sure that your, the ugly side of it, we call it, um, your paperwork is up to date, you know. So for instance, your most important bit of paperwork out there is going to be your pH license. Now, um, mine ex was only going to expire this year, but I updated it in November last year just because I didn't want to sit with a little bit of problems going forward. You know, I wanted everything to be hunky-dory for the new decade. So, yeah, so um, I did that. Um, I've updated my pH uh, permit or, or my license. And, um, yeah, it's good to go for the next three years. You know, we've got to update this uh, every three years. We've got to do a required number of hunts. So, um, yeah, submitted everything, my dangerous game, everything like that, um, all covered in this particular license. So uh, the last thing you want is when you're out there and for any hiccup to happen, um, you want to have all your bases covered. So um, I'm pretty stoked with the way this thing goes. Um, and then uh, moving on to your next bit of paperwork is your PDP. Now that's called a professional driving permit. Yes, in South Africa we have such a thing called professional driving permit. <laughs> um, basically it just, you know, for, for us at cart passengers uh, from overseas, it's just always nice to have, um, it's actually legally required of a professional hunter um, to have this when transporting overseas guests. And um, yeah, I'm just, you know, I just, mine also again expired at the beginning of this year um so i went in i've had it all um updated you've got to do eye tests to um to police clearance um so yeah there is a bit of work that that's involved um it's not the most ideal um but yeah i'm, I'm it's all it's all done now don't have to stress about it for the next Three years, uh, as far as the driving permit is concerned, I think you've got to renew it every year. So, um, yeah, that's. I'm just happy that everything's out of the way, you know. I don't want to sit with coming into the busy part of the season and you're running around trying to, you know, authorize all your permits and get that all set up. And then, yeah, guys, basically I've just got a flip fo folder just to keep track of all my expenses, uh, diesel, um, you know, ammo, anything that will be out in the bush that I just need to, you know, a lot of the time you're in your pickup, so you don't always get to document your paperwork. So it's nice just to have a folder, slide everything in there and, uh, yeah, just make sure that, um, you know, it's all neat and you don't lose it. So by the end of the, the hunt, you can wrap up all your costs and, um, you know, what you spent and what you're going to be making at the end of it. So, um, yeah, a nice little bit of, um, how can I say, trick over the trade. Uh, just I pop it in the back of my seat. Um, yeah, I've always just got it on me. Then, guys, so, um, yeah, yes. Uh, what an interesting couple of months as far as overseas clients and um, traveling arrangements are concerned as far as uh, the coronavirus. That's thrown a bit of a spanner in the works where Trump has closed um, all routes to through the, you know, the European side of things so if you are coming over to south africa or africa and one of your detours is through heathrow or wherever wherever it may be just double check on your flight details don't stress south africa we're not cleared but uh yeah we're a little bit isolated so we don't get as much interaction as the guys do up north but uh yeah, so just you just always want to make sure that your, your flight details and everything are set to go and there's no delay or they won't allow you into a certain country because of what's going on. Um, it's a huge epidemic and it's it's a little bit sad to see, but um, yeah, we just, you know, we've got to try and prevent as many cases as possible. So just check with, if you book through a travel agency or if you booked yourself, just check online with all the flight details. Um, yeah, and as far as South Africa is concerned, um, SAA, South African Air, um, if you guys have been following the South African news, we've uh, gone through a bit of a slump uh, financial uh, problem as far as the airline's concerned, so they've had to cut costs uh, for, for the foreseeable future, you know, we're not 100% sure um, where we're going to go with this, so what they've done is to to um, 
to hold back on a few costs. They've cut two routes, and that's the ones to East London and the other ones to Port Elizabeth. Um, so obviously trying to save costs that way. Um, now, those of you that have traveled within South Africa before know that SAA, South African Air, um, are your preferred uh, airline f as far as rifle transportation is concerned. So, yeah, so unfortunately we couldn't get the rifles into East London or Port Elizabeth. Um, however, in the last couple of days and uh, coming up in the next two or three weeks or so, SAA Link, uh, which is like a um, low-cost airline for South African Air. Actually, I don't think it's low-cost. I think it's just um, it's a smaller plane. Uh, I don't know if they're cheaper, though. That's the only thing we'll have to check on. Um, but, yeah, those guys, uh, they've come on board, so they will be flying into Port Elizabeth and East London, and they do transport rifles. So that's a bonus that seems to have... Um, picked up the hiccup there a little bit so yeah we're very fortunate otherwise we were trying to make other plans you know most of the airlines coming into PE or South Africa uh, or East London are lower cost airlines Safair, Kalula those guys um, and they don't transport uh, any firearms at all so yeah it made a little bit of a logistical nightmare at the beginning of the season but Fortunately, everything seemed to fall into place. So, um, yeah, we're very fortunate now that, you know, the season can get going and let's, you know, keep moving. I've spoken to a lot of guys um, as far as the outfitters are concerned about cancellations, how many people have cancelled um, uh, because of the coronavirus. It doesn't seem to be a large deal of panic at the moment um, and it doesn't need to be. Um, but the guys are taking, and there has been one or two uh, cancellations, which is a little bit of a concerning factor, especially guys that depend on the hunting is concerned. Um, so, yeah, um, guys, that's probably all I've got as far as, the, you know, the coronavirus and, and uh, flying SAA is concerned. But, um, yeah, just, you know, just keep double-checking. Um, keep following your airline on on social media they normally post it or just keep checking your emails just make sure that you're 100 percent certain with your flights in and out um, of south africa and the domestic flights within south africa okay guys and then um yeah so i'm pretty pumped up for the 17th of march uh, it's been long overdue um yeah <laughs> frustrated is is an understatement uh, i just want to get out there i really do um i've had like i said i've had a lot as far as my personal life's concerned i've had a lot happen in the past couple of months so you know just to spend a couple of days or a week or two out in the bush felt is just so exciting for me and i, I really can't look you know i really can't um be more excited than what i am now so yeah i just wanted to come now um you know i'm having sleepless nights thinking about it but uh yeah so guys basically um I'll always, I'll always refer back to this, but a, a very good um, friend of mine, PH, he's of the older generation, and that's where I've learned most of my stuff, PH. And, um, he always said to me, he said, Dills, the difference between a good and a great PH is planning. And I've, I've always, you know, that's always been in the back of my mind, and I've always tried to be um, best possibly prepared as I possibly can. So, yeah, guys, so from... The end towards the end of last year, I, I was spending a lot of time on on the farm, uh, on the on the hunting concession, um, just understanding animal behaviour, um, checking where certain species lived, um, what their feeding patterns were, which was difficult because of the drought. Um, you know, it was very irregular, and obviously we had feeding points uh, on the ranch. Uh, so the animals could come in, feed, and then go back out. So now that the drought's over, it's flipped everything back on its head again, you know. So, and I wouldn't say it's gone back to normal. It's just um, it's changed things drastically. So I've spent the, the last three weeks. I spent quite a bit of time on the ranch. Um, we did the game capturing. So just to try and prepare myself for the upcoming season, understanding where certain species are living at the moment. Um, what their feeding behavior is are they coming into any lands or um 
how they're behaving around the mountainous areas. Um, yeah, so I've been very fortunate that I've been allowed the um, the free range, if you want to call it, um, of the ranch, checking out these certain things so that I know that I'm best prepared come the 17th of March. So my clients, unfortunately, I can't mention any names or anything until the social media contract has been signed. But um, yeah, he, he arrives in on... So basically on a, on a typical safari, you... Uh, this particular client, he bought an auction out of SCR, I think it was, <clears throat> and he will be um, hunting a roan and a sable. Normally on a seven-day safari, guys that book two animals normally tend to add on to their packages, but they only do that once they get here. Um, so I'm not banking on just those two animals for seven days. Well, I hope not. Um, but yeah, pretty excited about it. Um, so normally what would happen is you would fly into Johannesburg, um, catch a domestic flight into East London or Port Elizabeth. East London's two hours, two and a half hours to the lo uh, lodge. Um, Port Elizabeth's about three and a half hours to four hours to the to the lodge. So um, yeah, we'll have a driver there waiting uh, in a bus or a pickup. Collect you bring you down to the ranch if there is a bit of daylight it's still getting it's still light towards the later periods of the afternoon so we might get a chance to go to the range and um you know sight in the rifles just get a bit of comfort just get comfortable in this case the client's not bringing his rifle so it'll either be using mine or, or the lodges i prefer you use mine just because i know like today i'm preparing it so that i know that it's shooting 100 percent by the time my client gets here so that there's no delay you know you're not spending a lot of time on the on the, on the range um he's just getting the feel for your rifle basically so yeah so we'll sight in rifles if you don't get a chance in the afternoon or the evening we'll do it early the next morning and because it's a bit warm out so we normally start the day at about five to six o'clock in the morning and you want to be out in the bush by seven o'clock no later because it does get warm quite quickly so once you're out there you'll typically hunt towards um probably about 11 12 o'clock in the afternoon just the heat starts bearing down on you then and um yeah you move you from from there you have a bit of lunch kick your feet up uh, relax until about half past two, three o'clock. Um, by that stage, you want to be on your vantage points on in the mountains or um, off lookout areas and, and just glassing, you know, spend a bit of time glassing because animals will um, start moving around towards the, the later periods. Um, so yeah, guys, that's typically a normal day on the ranch. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what you can look forward to. Um, going forward you know so um yeah really really excited for the 17th um i'm not gonna linger too much on it but uh my time is almost coming up to get the to get on the range so but guys from a from a personal point of view uh, like i said to you earlier on in the podcast is um i've had a lot of change in my life um those of you that know me uh, i used to work for my mom and my brother, part of the family business. The family business had been running for about 30 years now. And um, yeah, I've decided to to give it a break. Um, nothing on, you know, no bad vibes or anything like that. I just, you know, there was something at SCR this year that just clicked in me and uh, just made me realize that, you know what, um, my passion and, and my heart lies in the industry hunting conservation um and that's what i need to follow so um yeah huge risk um i've got a one-year-old daughter she turned one in january um i've got my wife i've got a beautiful house um and now it's to try and you know keep that going you know and you watch a lot of motivational videos and you see these guys saying, you know, just keep following your heart and hard work will pay off. And, and this time I really hope it does. Um, hunting is a huge passion of mine. Conservation is a huge passion of mine. And when I look back at my family, you know, my, my generation, we, we've, we've had it all. We've, we've seen beautiful animals. We've seen the rhino, we've seen the lions. And, but, but my next thing is, is what about my daughter's generation coming through? 
And that's what concerns me, and that's why I'm so passionate about this, is that I want to, her to experience what I got to experience um, in my life. And the only way we're going to do that is if, step by step, we prove to the anti-hunters or the guys that don't believe in it out there that, you know what, not all hunters are bad. Um, there are guys that give us a very bad name and give us that that ugly stigma that we don't like to see on Disney Channel or wherever the case may be but I just need people to understand the hard work that goes in behind the scenes and and that's why I've started this PH Journals YouTube journey of mine is to show you guys exactly what goes into preserving and conserving these beautiful animals that we've got and you know um we're we're not going to achieve anything fighting against one another, but we can achieve by trying to convince people that you know what this without hunters we wouldn't be sitting where we are at the moment. Still get to look at our white rhino, our black rhino, our lions, because at the end of the day, the real enemies are still out there. You know the poachers, the guys that are destroying our coastlines, the lion bone trade, elephant ivory. You know just, the list is just endless and. Um, those are the guys we need to be focusing our bad energy on. And yeah, guys, you know, at the end of the day, I always refer back to a very inspirational guy, and I always look up to him as Kevin Hart. And he always he sat with Joe Rogan in a podcast, actually, um, and he just said, you said, you know what, close that book of yours. Look back on those chapters and how much difference have you made. I'm not going to be making a difference rolling a tire through a shop and making as much money as I possibly want. Um, but I am going to make a difference preserving majestical animals out there that have given me the joy through my whole life. And that's what I want to do. That's, that's where my passion is. That's where my heart lies. My heart's in Africa. My heart's um, in these magnificent animals. And... Uh, I don't want to preserve them for now, I don't want to conserve them for now, but I do for the future. And if we all keep thinking like that for one day, not for tomorrow, not for today, but for one day, we can achieve great things. And um, yeah, I'm, guys, I'm, I'm scared, I really am, um, because you know that financial cushion's not there anymore. But um, as far as my passion and my drive's concerned, I'm positive and I'm, I'm I'm so excited for the future. I really am. Um, so yeah, guys, um, some exciting stuff for 2020. Um, I'm really pumped up. Uh, I can't tell you guys how excited I am. I've, I've put a little bit of money into my video equipment to try and capture as much as I possibly can for you guys to share with you guys what's out there and, and what us hunters are actually doing to preserve these magnificent animals that we've got here. And um, they've given me so much joy in my life. So, you know, if I can give back a little bit and close that book of mine and look back at that last chapter and see what a difference I've made, uh, I'm going to be happy one day. And... You know, at, at the end of the day, um, I hope most of us hunters are out there to, to achieve that same thing and not just, you know, ride that bad stigma that's out there. So, um, yeah, guys, for me, getting ready to go into the range, uh, I'm going to say cheers. Um, if you haven't yet, you know, follow me on the YouTube journey. Um, it's The PH Journals. Um, and yeah, just you can catch me up on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, I'm even on LinkedIn now. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty pumped up about it and, and I'm really excited. So looking forward to the future. I can't do this without you guys. Um, so I appreciate all the support. And um, yeah, guys, um, that's it from me. I'll see you guys on all my social media platforms. Otherwise, in the 2020 season or next year. Um, but until then, happy hunting. All the best, and we'll catch up with you guys soon. Cheers, guys.